Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And a couple of weeks ago, I made a post of a poll on what my next video should be. And majority of you guys actually suggested to do a supercomputer or a cluster computing, which is fine and everything. But this, I put off making this video years ago. It's because there wasn't really a good tutorial out there that had a value. Most of them was just, here's a master, here's a slave. I'm going to send some math problems using MPI and they'll solve it and return. It doesn't, it didn't really have a real world value to it. So I put off making it. So I decided to take a different approach and I'm going to be building a render farm, which is the same concept. You still have a master and a slave where the master will divvy up the work to all the slaves and, you know, build 3d frames for you. So let's get started. Now, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, follow me now. I'll leave a link right here. And you guys probably noticed that I've been uploading a video of planets colliding, and that is rendered all from my Raspberry Pi cluster. Um, now, I'm no Blender expert, so I actually took a huge tutorial and learned how to do this by tutor for you. I'll leave a link in the description to that video that I learned this from. Now, I'm not suggesting that this render farm is either cost effective or productive at all, but it's more of a proof of concept that we can and that ARM servers are being more popular these days and even Amazon's, you know, employing ARM servers now. So it might be useful in the future, but what do I know? That's just my thought. Now, to set this up, it was really easy. Really, it was really easy. It was just a couple of commands and I had to transfer some files over. So I'm going to show you how right now. So the first thing we need to do on the Raspberry Pi is to sudo apt install blender. Now I have it installed already, but it usually takes about 175 megabytes or so. And you're basically done with blender. Now head over to blender. Okay. So th for this next step, it's just to make it so we could run this headless, meaning using SSH and we don't need to actually log into the desktop of our Raspberry Pi anymore. So first we need to head over to file and go over to user preferences. Next, we'll go over to add-ons. And then in here, we're going to type net. All right, you see how network rendering is there and it's unchecked. We got to check it off. And if you have a problem finding this or your Raspberry Pi doesn't have this installation, this network render, you could actually copy it from another place, say like the internet, or if you got your desktop installed and it has network render, you could just pull the plugin from the uh, program files directory and then install the plugin from file. I ran into this little issue, not with all the Raspberry Pi, but with some of them. Uh, Tinkerboard I had a problem with, it didn't have the network render, so I just copied it over. Now, the next step is to use is to save the settings. Make sure it's saved. I clicked on it a few times. You close out of it. And the first thing we're going to do here is to change this over to network render. I'm going to hit slave on the right hand side. And then over here, that's, you don't really need to touch anything here as long as it's here. And then you can hit start services. If you want, it's going to bring you over to this state where it's running. And I am going to go over to file save as. And then I'm going to call this file slave.blend, save as blender file. And we're done here. I can close this out now. And if you decide to SSH or if you get into a terminal of the Pi, all you have to do is type in blender dash B for background slave.blend dash A. Hit enter. And automatically it's just going to run in network mode in terminal without having to run the GUI. And right now it's, there's not, my master node is not on. So that's how you actually could run this headless along with, um, obviously I won't be using the GUI on this. I won't hook this up to the HDMI. So I could just SSH into here and do this. So to just make sure you have your Raspberry Pi configured with SSH on. So here you go. I'm going to put on as enabled and VNC just for safe measures, if anything. Hit OK. So now I'm going to be able to SSH into this. You could actually take this SD cards. That's what's good about the Raspberry Pi and clone it onto your other three Raspberry Pis if you're planning to build a cluster. Or you could just do the same setup for each and individual Raspberry Pis yourself. So either way, it works. So here we moved over to my laptop where we have an i7 core. 
uh, let's see, LSCPU, and it's a 366U at 2 gigahertz, 3.2 max. So here we have our blender. Now, the first thing we need to do, again, is to enable network rendering. Uh, I already did it on this computer, but to show you, we have to save the setting and it's network rendering. Over here, we on the dropdown, we have network render itself. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is to turn this into a master node. So I don't have to do anything here. It's going to broadcast its own signal, and all I have to do is start service. Now, it doesn't detect anything yet because I don't have anything hooked up. So I'm going to head over to all my Raspberry Pis. SSH, Pi, at, you know, wherever their addresses are. So remember to take a note on that. So 122 was the one we just did. And then I'm just going to do Blender B Slave A. So as you wait for this, it's actually going to connect onto my network render. You see here? Connect it to master which means on this computer all i have to do is open our master monitor and we should be able to see the raspberry pis uh, i'm gonna activate all the other raspberry pis right now okay so i'm gonna lie a little bit to you guys i ended up having only three raspberry pi threes and one tinkerboard uh, one of my raspberry pi threes decided to just die on me while filming this so yeah it's we're gonna cheat a little with the tinkerboard all right, here we have all four nodes connected. I'm just using SSH. Since I made it headless, I don't need to log into each one. So for my master node, everything should be running because it shows that it's detecting. Now we need to open a second installation of Blender. And here we need to switch over to a network rendering and hit the little refresh icon right over here on the right side. So now if it loads, that's good. That means it worked. So if I hit open master monitor it's actually going to open up a browser and show me all the pies that are connected so i got the two raspberry pies three raspberry pies connected and one tinker board i have no jobs nothing's working on so everything is connected everything is working and it's just waiting for a job so let's start on that so here i have i'm not a master at blender i just learned how to use it recently so i'm just going to do a quick little thing here i have the block i'm just moving it up i'm hitting the button n to change to so, so i could transform it i'm on frame one let's make sure we're on frame one and i'm gonna make it only 50 frames okay so on frame one i'm gonna right click on rotation and insert keyframe here i'm gonna move over to frame 50 and here i am actually gonna make it so it rotates z yeah, let's do Z. And then I'm going to insert a keyframe. So now if I go back to the first frame by pressing this left, this button over here, hit play, you should see it spin around. Okay. So there we have our scene. It's going to be 50 frames of a cube spinning around. And what we're going to do now is set up all our settings here. We have to first save the file because it's going to give an error if you don't so i'm going to save it as cube save i'm going to switch back over to our cycles render modify all the settings that we need here first okay so i'm going to change it over to 720 so it won't be a killer and sampling i'm actually going to change this down to 25 and preview to be 10 and that's it i'm just going to leave it like that now i'm going to hit save again since i'm still in cycle render save and it's going to save the settings head back over network rendering rename this to cube over here on the right side change the engine to cycles and chunks i can leave at five i'll just do three that means it's going to send three frames per um raspberry pi per unit refresh this you're going to see my boards i'm going to output this to slash home slash done so it's on my main folder and the format i'm going to change avi jpeg quality at 90 and that is it now i'm going to hit animate on network and it's going to start doing its thing so over here 
you're going to see it automatically refresh and it's going to send the chunks dispatch three dispatch nine it should be dispatch 12 i believe because we got four units um raspberry pi 2 doesn't seem to want to work as you can see right over here and we could review this by just like because i have this uploaded yeah right here raspberry pi 2 is still waiting for jobs so i don't know why it doesn't want to send it work network render node initiated oh now it's receiving frames there you go so now if i go back to my browser all is working on the cube 12 frames sent out six is done so now we just wait for it to render so here we have it uh we just finished it took roughly about seven minutes to do that and it would have been faster actually if i made it um spread frame by frame but instead i made it three chunks instead of one chunk i think it would have been faster with one chunk so to watch our animation uh, all we have to do is either hit render it'll just play frame by frame or we could go over to our folder and wherever we saved it it should have that file and we should be able to play our video there just out of curiosity uh, what i'm going to do is change this back over to cycles render and actually have my cpu on this laptop uh, try to render this and see how it will look so i'm just going to change it back to 3d view so it stops playing that and uh, we have the same settings 720 etc etc uh, output folder is going to be home done i'm just going to name it one two three just so i know it's this computer avi jpeg and render animation let's see how long this is going to take so here we have it we actually finished the render and it took about 15 minutes or so which I'm very surprised at because I thought it would be a, bit, a little bit quicker. But then again, in my defense, this is an i7 older generation, well, third generation CPU on quad core. I think it's dual core with two hyper threading, so it's a little bit slower than 16 cores. So yeah, I, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad at all. But I'm very impressed with the cluster and it did, you know, did really well. Overall, I thought that this was a really cool proof of concept. It does have real world use to it. Imagine you had uh, XU4s, like eight XU4s with 64 cores. I'm pretty sure that's powerful enough to outrun some desktops right now in our day and age. And the cost of running the XU4s wouldn't even be too much. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. And I might be doing more polls like that. And again, follow me on Twitter because I've been way active on that now. So I've been posting a lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.